Hey, what's up everybody? I'd like to welcome you to another Juice tutorial. And in this tutorial, I'm going to show how to build a very basic circular buffer. So this is an essential concept to learn if you want to build any type of delay effect and also useful for other digital signal processing effects in audio. So if you find this video useful, be sure to give it a like and also subscribe to the channel. You can also join our audio programming discord. So it's a great way to connect with other audio developers who are also learning about audio audio programming and you can join us on that at the audioprogrammer.com forward slash community. So this is going to involve a little bit of theory to start off. So I'll just show you some of the concepts on paper and then afterwards we will do it in code. So let's go ahead and get started. Also, before we start, I should emphasize these concepts are not of my own creation. These actually come from a colleague of mine named Daniel Waltz, who's an awesome audio developer. I'll put the link to his website in the description below, but just wanted to say thank you, Daniel, so much for your contributions to the audio community and for sharing these great concepts with us. So let's start off this video by asking the question, when might we want a circular buffer? So one example of this is very common is in a delay. So the reason why we might want a circular buffer is because we need to retrieve an audio value in the past. So if you think of a delay, uh, what happens is that it grabs an audio value or it grabs a sound uh, to our ears and what it does is that it holds it and it delays it and it decreases the gain through time and their effects and there are different things that you can do with it and so on so anytime we want to retrieve a value in the past and hold on to it and do something to it that might be a scenario where we where we might want a circular buffer so Let's go through the concept of what a circular buffer is and how it relates to our main buffer. So I'm going to try to do as simple of a use case as I can. So uh, people who may be unfamiliar with these concepts can follow along. So as you know, a buffer is a, uh, a container that essentially holds our audio information, right? So if we just make an example buffer, and in this case, I'm going to go with the, the most simple use case possible, which will be a buffer of four. Okay, this is going to be a buffer that's going to have a size of four. So we will just draw it like this. Okay. There we go. And that would be index zero, one, two, and three. Okay. And normally buffer sizes are much bigger than this. So they might be a si very common sizes are like 256, 512, sometimes 1024, and so on. So these, uh, these buffers, uh, this buffer, each index might hold a value that would hopefully be bet somewhere between 1 and minus 1. So it might be minus 0.25, or it might be... 0 0.06 okay and so on okay this one can only hold four values at a time and if we're in our audio callback oh my eraser is big there and if we're in our audio callback every time that we every time that we call this the contents of this container would be replaced OK, so the problem with that is that, like I said, if we have a delay, we want to hold that value somewhere in memory uh, so that we can retrieve it and possibly do audio effects to it and so on. But if the contents of this buffer is being replaced every single time that uh, that we're that we're processing audio, then we have no way to retrieve it. That's why the circular buffer comes in. OK, so now. Let's say that we create a circular buffer. Now, for reasons that will become apparent later in this tutorial, I'm going to make this circular buffer a size of six. Okay, so here we go. Zero, one, two, three, four and five so the size of our main buffer is equal to not three okay the very common uh, mistake that people make when they're first starting off the size of this is actually four 
okay, because we're starting off with zero. And the size of this circular buffer is six, right? So the reason that we have a circular buffer and the reason that the circular buffer is larger than our main buffer is so we can retrieve values in the past, okay? So in this particular example, this one would, would be able to retrieve two values in the past, okay? But uh, a lot of times it would be much larger. So you could make, so if you're, uh, so the the circular buffer size might be uh, 88,200. So it might be able to get about two seconds of uh, a piece of audio from two seconds in the past, okay? Uh, so, so that is the reason uh, why we have a circular buffer. The circular buffer, the whole purpose of it is that it needs to be able to hold more information than your regular buffer. Okay. Now, what happens is that we want to copy the context, uh, the, 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 uh, the information of our main buffer to the circular buffer. Okay, so let's start with the first callback. Like I said, this is a much smaller example than what we would see in a real life example, but this will show you the concept. So if we just do a start, okay, and then we copy, so we have our main buffer, and this is going to be holding our, it's going to be holding our main audio information Okay, now we want to copy it to our circular buffer. Four, five, six. Sorry about my messy handwriting. Zero, one, two, three, four, five. So in this, this first time, this first callback, everything is fine because zero copies to zero, one copies to one, two copies to two, three copies to three, right? So that is fine. There's no, there are no problems there. That, that uh, delay buffer, that circular buffer holds that information just fine. There's no need to do anything fancy there. So now we have step two. And now you're going to see the reason why I've intentionally made this circular buffer a size of six and rather than a size of eight to show you how we need to calculate or, or do a little bit of trickery to make our audio wrap around. And you'll see what I mean in just a moment. So now we have another buffer of audio, size four. So now we've got this. And now we have our circular buffer, three, four, five, six, four, five. Okay. Now the problem is, is that now, so we started here. Oh, sorry, I went to my eraser. So we started here. And we copy the contents of our main audio buffer to our circular buffer. I'll just call this CB for short in step one. And I will, I'll just actually, oh, sorry, I will do this just to show that there's no actual audio in there. Now we're in our second callback. And then I'm going to move this here. So I will grab this. I will move this over here to show you. Okay, so now we are writing to here. Okay, this is what's called our right position. Okay, so in the first callback, we wrote to zero, one, two, three. And now for our second callback, we wanna write this first index of our buffer to 
what would be index four of our circular buffer and one to our fifth index of our circular buffer. Okay, but you're going to see a problem here, which is that we have these two extra values, two and three. Where are we going to write those two? Okay, and that's that's where the problem that's where the problem comes in. By the way, one thing that I should note is that the right position when we start off is at 0.0. It would it would actually be inaccurate for me to put it at the very start. It would be we want to put it right here to show. Right position is zero, and right position here is uh, position four. Okay. So what happens? So so now what we need to do is that we want to write zero our, our uh, zero index from our main buffer and our first index from our main buffer to the to our circular buffer. But then what we want to do is this is the same buffer here. So this is our main, this is our circular buffer. Sorry. Four, five, six. And so now what we have is two, three, zero, one. And what we want to do is now we want to write two, and three to the zeroth and first of index of our circular buffer. So what happens is that this just keeps wrapping around and that's where the namesake of circular buffer comes, comes from, which is that what we want to do is when we get to the end of the buffer, because this, because this buffer only has so much, uh, has, has a limited size. So the size of this is six right and and because it has a size of six if we just wanted to keep on writing then what would happen is we would just write off of the end of the buffer and it would just keep going on and on and into some other memory that uh that isn't allocated that isn't uh attributed to this buffer and because of that that's why we need we want to say Hold on, when we get to the end of the buffer, writing them rather than writing values after the last index, we want to go back to the very beginning and replace the contents at the beginning. So that is the concept of where the circular buffer system comes from. Okay, so now let's go and try to write this in code. And we're going to need to do a couple calculations in order to make sure that we're always staying within the bounds of our circular buffer. So now we're in a juice project. This is just a blank plugin project. We aren't going to be making any sound today. We're just going to be going through the concept of actually creating a circular buffer for this one. So I'm actually got a web page open that just points to our audio buffer class. So we need to create another buffer. This is going to be our circular buffer. So what I'm going to do is just create an audio buffer down here. And the way that we do this is we just say juice audio buffer. And we have to tell it what type of samples we want to hold in it. In this case, we're going to hold float samples. And I'll just call this a delay buffer. And now that is has been declared. And I'm also going to create a write position. So we need to keep track of where we're actually writing to in this delay buffer. And the way that we're going to do that is by creating this variable called write position. And I'm going to initialize it to zero. So now we're in our plugin processor.cpp. And as I was saying to you when we were doing our theory, we want to make sure that our delay buffer or our circular buffer is actually larger than our main buffer. So our main buffer is going to be a buffer size sample. So it'll probably be a size of about 512 or 
1024. And what we want to do is we want to make sure that our delay buffer is larger than that. And what we can do is determine that here in prepare to play. So prepare to play is a method that's called right before our audio starts to play or any time that the sound card changes sample rates or any time that we stop playing the audio, then get ready to start playing the audio again, prepare to play will get called. Okay. So this is going to be where we're going to actually set the size of our delay buffer. And what I can do is I can determine this by just creating a variable and we will call this delay buffer size. And what we want to do is in this case, let's just set it to uh, two seconds of of audio and that would be determined by what our sample rate is so if our sample rate was 44,100 and we wanted two seconds of sound that means 44,100 samples would be played per second we want two seconds of that which means that we would want 44,100 times two right so what we could do is we could get our sample rate and just multiply that by two okay and now that's going to give us our delay buffer size, which would be 88,200. And now in order to initialize our delay buffer, so we have this delay buffer currently. Currently it has a size of zero, so it doesn't have any size to it. And that's what we're doing in this prepare to play. So now I can call the method delay buffer set size. And for a uh, new number of channels, we can use this method that's in our audio processor called get total num output channels. Okay, so which would probably be two. So normally it would be a stereo signal. And then here is where we set the number of samples that we want our delay buffer to have for its size. And here I can just plug in delay buffer size. Okay. Now, one small thing that you might notice is that sample rate is a double and this 2.0 is going to be a double as well. If I just pull this back and just undo this, you see that this actually takes an int. And just to prevent any weird uh, type conversions, what I would probably do here is I would probably say int delay buffer size. And this will just cast delay buffer size to an int, okay? So if you want to be fancy, you could probably do a static cast here. That'd probably be the more correct way to do this, but I'm just going to keep it simple and do it like this for this. And this should be fine for such a simple use case. So next thing, in, the next thing that we need to do is we actually need to set the rules for when our delay buffer is actually going to fill with, uh, with our our regular buffer of information. Okay, so now we're in the process block of plugin processor.cpp. So this is where our main audio is being processed. This is where the magic actually happens. So first thing I'm going to do is get rid of all this commentary just to make everything a little bit more clear. What I like to do before I start doing any coding is I really like to think about some of the things that I'm going to need to do. So I'm just going to do this in comments. So one of the first things that I'm thinking about is that remember we want to take a look and make sure that our actual buffer is going to be able to copy as a whole to the delay buffer without needing to wrap around. So that's one of the first things that we'll need to do. So check to see if main buffer copies to delay buffer without needing to wrap. So here we can say if yes, copy main buffer contents to the delay buffer. If no, then we're going to need to do a couple calculations. So there will probably be some uh, space that will be at the end of our delay buffer that we would probably need to copy at least a few of those values to. So we would need to determine 
how much space is left at the end of the delay buffer. Copy, uh, then copy that amount of contents to the end. And then we're going to need to do another calculation because we're going to copy at least a little bit of that contents to the end, but then we will probably have some space that some, some contents that we still need to copy to the beginning of the delay buffer. So that's where that wrapping around happens to make sure that we don't go off the edge of our delay buffer, but that we wrap around and that the rest of the contents gets copied back to the beginning of the delay buffer. So it will be something like uh, calculate how much contents is remaining to, uh, to copy, then copy remaining amount to beginning of delay buffer. So there we go. So that's that's the main guts of what we're going to need to do. And then what we want to do is we're going to use our right position. So remember we created this int called right position. And that's what enables us to actually uh, keep track of where we are in our delay buffer. And since we're copying uh, our main buffer, main buffer amount of contents, buffer amount of contents each time that we do this callback, what we want to do is we want to take our right position and we want to add buffer get num samples con uh, amount to the right position because every time that we're every time that we're doing our every time that we're doing our copying we want our right position to say hey okay so we've copied buffer dot get num samples amounts of data to our delay buffer and that's how we're keeping track of where we need to copy to on the next time that we do our callback okay so one thing that we could do is we could set some variables. We could say auto um, buffer size equals buffer get num samples. So this is nice because this just makes this a little bit easier to read. And we could do this for our delay buffer as well. Auto delay buffer size equals delay buffer get num samples like that okay so another thing that we want to do is we want to make sure that this right position stays within the bounds of our delay buffer right so we want to make sure that when our right position is about to go off the edge of our delay buffer that it wraps back around to the beginning because it's the right position that's going to tell that's going to tell us where we need to actually do the copying. So because of this, I can use the modulo operator operator uh, to actually make sure that we're always wrapping around in our delay buffer rather than uh, going off the edge. So what I could say is right position modulo, which is this percent equals delay buffer size. And this ensures that right position always stays between zero and delay buffer size. So now we're actually going to take this pseudo code and we're actually going to turn it into real code. So one of the first things that we want to do is we're going to take our pseudo code and we're just going to cut it. And what we need to do is we need to put it inside these four, uh, this for loop here from lines 145 to 150 because this is iterating through the channel 
uh, each channel of audio. And if we have two channels of, of audio, it needs to do this for each channel of audio. So here we have a variable that's already been set for us, get right pointer. So this is our actually our uh, what enables us to copy our data from uh, one buffer to another. So we're just going to keep that there. And I'm going to paste all of this here. So now we're just going to go step by step through this and actually do this. So first thing we need to do is check to see if the main buffer copies to the delay buffer without needing to wrap. So what we could do is we could say if the delay buffer length, delay buffer size is greater than the buffer size plus the right position. So we have the right position that's going to be somewhere in the delay, somewhere in our delay buffer, right? So let's say that our buffer size was, uh, let's say that it was 10 and that our delay buffer size was 20 and that we that our right position was at 18. So our right position is at 18 in our delay in our delay buffer and our delay and our buffer size is 10, which means that we're going to write two positions to the end of our delay buffer and then it's going to need to wrap around and it's going to write the other eight positions to the very beginning of the delay buffer. Okay, so that's the type of thing that we're looking to do. But if we're in our first iteration, our delay buffer size is 20 and our regular buffer size is 10. In the first, in, in the first iteration, we're going to be able to copy that no problem, right? Because uh, our right position would be zero, our buffer size is uh, 10, and our delay buffer size is 20. So that's why we would be able to just copy that no problem. Okay, and I'll, after we do all of this, I'll be able to um, I'll be able to uh, go through this, and I'll put some numbers in just to show you some various scenarios, just to make sure our math is right. So this is so this is this part here. This if yes. So if our delay buffer size is big enough to hold our our buffer size, and that where our right position isn't too far where we're going to need to do some calculations, then we can say copy the main buffer contents to the delay buffer. Okay, so what we could do is we have a handy method here in our audio buffer class called copy from with ramp. So this will enable us later on to do uh, gains if we want to do uh, if we want to do a difference in gain between one buffer and another buffer. So what we're going to do is this copy from with ramp. So what what buffer are we copying from? So we're copying, uh, so we're doing delay buffer copy from with ramp. Okay, so we're copying the contents from our main buffer to the delay buffer. So the delay buffer at the moment doesn't have any information in it. We need to take information from the main buffer put it into the delay buffer. Okay, the destination channel. Once again, we're iterating through the channel. So this is how we can just put our channel variable from our for loop in there. Our destination start sample. Okay, what do you think would the des the what do you think the destination start sample needs to be, right? Where do we need to start copying from? Uh, so I would think that that would need to be our right position, right? Because what we want to do is we don't, we, we want to make sure that when, uh, when we've actually already written data to the delay buffer, we want to make sure that we don't write over the data that we've just copied. We want to make sure that we move that right position along and then copy from the right position and buffer dot get number of samples um, all the way to the end until we get to the end, then wrap back around. Next would be the source. Okay, the source means what what buffer are we copying from? 
and that's where our channel data comes in. So that comes, that's how we're going to get the uh, actual information from our buffer, from our right pointer in our buffer. So here I can put channel data. Okay, what about number of samples? How many samples do you think that we want to try to copy? If we're safe and we can make sure and we're able to make sure that we're able to fit buffer size without going over our delay buffer size, then we just want to copy buffer size samples, right? Okay, because we're okay. And then here for start gain and end gain, I'm just going to put 0.1. These are just arbitrary numbers here. Okay. So that's if we're able to copy the buffer size, buffer size amount of samples without going over the edge of our delay buffer. Okay, over the, over the end of our circular buffer. Okay, now we have the else. So if no, so once again, we have all of this. So I could take all of this and actually just put it in here. And we have to say how much how much space is left at the end of the delay buffer. Okay, so we need to do a calculation here and we can say num uh, num samples to end and Let's see, what do we want that to be? So we could say, I think that's a pretty, pretty easy calculation there. So we could say delay buffer size minus right position, right? So if we had a delay buffer size of 20 and our right position was 18, then if we did 20 minus 18, then we know that we only have two samples that we can copy to at the very end, right? So that's the number of samples to the end, okay? So this could be quite tricky to figure out, uh, but I hope, I hope the way that I'm explaining it is intuitive, okay? So that's how we're getting the number of samples that we need to copy to get to the end of the buffer. And then we're gonna have some more that we're going to need at the very beginning, right? So let's think about that, right? So let's say that we had 10 samples that are in our buffer, okay? And that we've just, and we're going with this previous scenario I described to you where we had two samples remaining that were able to be copied to the end of the delay buffer. So how many samples do we have left that we need to copy to the beginning of the of the delay buffer right so we copy we just copied two to the end and now we need to copy eight more to the beginning because 10 minus 2 is 8 right so that's how we're getting so now we're going to need to do uh num samples at beginning uh, or at i'll just say number of samples at start equals our buffer size minus num samples to end, right? So we've calculated how many samples we needed to get to the end of the buffer, and then we wrapped around and we said, okay, we still have a we still have a bunch of samples that we have uh, in our buffer that we need to copy at the very very beginning, and then that's how we calculate how many we need to uh, actually copy at the beginning. Okay, so then we got copy that amount to the end. Okay, so that, that comes from number of samples to end. So what we could say is delay buffer, and we can use the same, not soppy, copy from with ramp. Once again, we got channel. And then what do we want as the start sample here, right? Think about this, All right? I'm gonna give you a second, okay? We want this once again, because we're going, we're, we're copying the rest at the end. We want this to be 
right position, right? Because the right position is not at the beginning of the buffer. It's near the end. And we want to go from the right position to the end, right? So then our source is going to be, once again, channel data. And here we already did our calculation of how many samples we need to copy, which is the delay buffer size minus the right position, which is going to be num samples to end. And then once again, we'll just put 0 0.1 and 0 0.1 here. And then we already did this. Oops, this needs to be channel data, sorry. So I'm just gonna put this in order of then oops, okay. Then we just need to copy the remaining amount of samples at the beginning. So once again we got delay buffer, copy from with ramp. And we got channel, which just comes from our for loop up here. Where is it? Okay, so from here, this comes from our for loop. So this is going to be cycling. If it's a stereo scenario, it would be zero and one. It would be cycling through. Then we got our destination start sample. So the key thing here is that we did this copy from with ramp that went from our right position to the end, which means that we should be back, which means that we want to start back at the beginning again, right? So that means the start sample should be zero. And once again, we got channel data, num samples. So here's why we did this calculation, num samples at start. because we want to figure out, okay, so we copied some, some of our samples to the end, and now we have some samples remaining that we want to, that we want to um, put at the start of this delay buffer, and that's how we calculated that. And then once again, our gains, which we're just going to put at 0 0.1 for now. Okay, so that is essentially that's essentially it right there okay so so once again just walk just walking you through that okay just walking you through this process block so we have some variables that we've declared just to determine what our buffer size and delay buffer size are okay so it just keeps us from needing to write this out every single time then we have this channel data uh, variable that we have that just enables us to copy the data from our main buffer to our delay buffer. Then what we're doing is we're checking to see if we have the space to copy buffer size number of samples to the delay buffer size without needing to do funky calculations to wrap around. Okay, And we can do that by saying, okay, buffer size plus right position if that is less than our delay buffer size then we know we have enough we we have enough contents to fill the space without needing to wrap around and we just do a simple copy here okay copying from our main buffer to our delay buffer and if we don't have enough space to actually do that then what we need to do is two calculations we need to do a calculation that calculates how far are we from the right position to the end of our circular buffer? And we need to do that, figure out how much space we need to fill there. Then we need to do another calculation which says, okay, how much contents is left after we filled some of those positions at the very end? How many positions, how many samples do we need to fill at the start? And then we just do bullet delay buffer copy from uh, respectively for those. So just one delay buffer copy from that says, okay, fill the rest up to the end and then figure out how much is remaining and copy that to the very start of 
the of the circular buffer or the delay buffer. And then at the very end, we need to calc we need to make sure that our right position is in the proper place. So we say, okay, right position uh, plus equals buffer size because that's how much we're actually copying each time that we do this audio callback. And then we want to make sure finally that our delay buffer, that our right position never goes outside of delay buffer size because if it did, then there wouldn't be very much use for the right position, would there? So that's the reason why we want to have this modulo delay buffer size to make sure that the right position always wraps around to the very beginning once it gets to the very end. Okay, so let's test out this algorithm to make sure that it's actually even working properly. So what I'm gonna do is console out a couple values. Now, normally this is not something that you'd wanna do in your process block. You don't want to console out values in your audio callback. That's a, uh, that's a no-no. But we're going to do it in this case because we just wanna test out these values and because we're not processing uh, audio just yet, we're just, uh, processing data essentially. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the juice debug function, which is something like printf or C out. Uh, so it just logs to the console and let's, let's log a couple of values here. So one might be our delay buffer size. So we will do delay buffer size. We will log out our actual buffer size. So this is our main buffer size. And then let's see what else we want to log out. What about our right position? We want to know what our right position is. We want to make sure that that's actually wrapping around, right? So I think that's good. So let's go ahead and just actually build this, make sure it builds properly. I'm building it standalone as well. Okay, so we got a error. Okay, so this is a very common error. Uh, this is called a J assert, which means that this, all of these lines of code, this is positive and below, or destination start sample is greater than or equal to zero, and number of samples is greater than or equal to zero, it makes sure that these conditions are true. Uh, this is put in by the JUICE team to show that, to, to make sure that certain conditions are met uh, to prevent nasty things from happening. So this is actually the JUICE team kind of helping us. So if this statement is false, then it will stop the execution of your application only in debug mode and say hey something is wrong okay so this may look intimidating if you're first starting but the key is just to try to break down each part one at a time so first condition is destination start sample is greater than or equal to zero okay so we definitely want to make sure of that for a buffer so we see that zero is greater than or equal to zero so that's fine then we've got number of samples negative 87,668, okay? That does not sound right to me, okay? We don't want our buffer to have a negative number of values. So now what I can do is just go over here to the left and walk through the call stack just to see where this is actually called and what's actually happened. So this is still juice code. I'm gonna try to walk it back to where I see some of my code, okay? So this is my code here. And we see this copy from with ramp. What I can do is I can actually hover over these values here just to see what these values are. So if I go to number of values at start, we see that it's negative 87,668. So that's not, that's not right. We don't want that to be a negative number. So now it's just stepping back a little bit and seeing what is actually happening. So we have 87,000, negative 87,668. Once again, that's not right. So now we just look at our equation. So buffer size is 512. That looks right to me. Number of samples at end is 88,200. 88, okay, so that, 
that doesn't seem right. So now we step back again and look at where num number of samples to end is calculated. So we have 88,200, which doesn't, doesn't seem right. Okay, so why is it doing that? Let's look at delay buffer size, which is 88,200 minus our right position, which is zero, which is curious. Uh, so our, the first time this code executes where the right position is zero, it's actually executing this block. Okay, so I see what the problem is here, which is that we have this if statement in here, and this is supposed to be an else right here, but we don't actually have else written there. Okay. So it's supposed to be if else there. So uh, so yeah, easy error to make there, but that's how you essentially debug there. It, it, you just want to go back step by step and just break the process down and see what see what's happening. So that was a um, a good way to see what was happening with our program there. So here we go. So now we see this is this is actually working. Okay, cool. So let's do let's make sure that our buffer is actually wrapping around properly. So so we see at the very start our right position is 0 and then we're going buffer so we have right position is 512 1024 1536. So we see right position is adding buffer size number of samples each callback which is correct. Now we just want to make sure that it's actually wrapping around with the proper number of values here. So let's take a look here. If we go down, so I'm just looking for where it actually wraps around to the beginning. So, so here we are. So we see that we have a right position, uh, a final right position of 80, 87,928 are Delay buffer size is 88,200. And then the next time that we do the callback, our right position has wrapped around and we have another 240 values. Okay, so let's pull out our calculator here and make sure that our math is right. So we have, so if we do 88,200 minus 87,928, 88,200 minus 87,928, we have 272. Okay, so right, we know that our buffer size is 512. So now if we do 512 minus 272, we should get 240. So 512 minus 272 gives us 240. So we see that we have that 272, 272 values that took us to the end of, to the end of our, uh, our, to fill our buffer, which was 88,200, which meant that we had 240 more values that we needed to fill at the very beginning when our buffer wrapped around. And indeed, we have done that. So that works properly. Okay, so so we can see that that works properly. Once again, make sure that you actually get rid of these because you don't want these in your audio callback. Just a quick way to actually test that out. So one final thing that we might want to do is we might want to actually put this into its own function. Okay, so there's a uh, unsaid rule that I've heard that uh, that a function should be only 25 lines of code, or some people will say that uh, a function shouldn't be any larger than what fits on your screen. So I think that's a good rule of thumb to follow. So if we have this little body of work here, from here down to here, we see that this is all doing one thing, which is filling our delay buffer. So. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new function here and I'll just call it void. We want to make sure we have our actual class name there. And I'll just call this fill buffer. And this will take some arguments, but we will 
we will come back to that in a second. Okay, so now I'm going to take all of this business. I'm going to cut it. I'm going to paste it in there in our new function. And then I'm going to call this fill buffer. Now, there's some information in here that we're going to uh, need to pull in, right? There's some data. So for instance, our, this function doesn't know what channel is or what buffer size is or what delay buffer size is. So we just need to actually put that in. So let's do int channel. Uh, then we want our buffer size. We want delay buffer size. What else do we want? Then we want our channel data, which is our actual data from our buffer. So that will be a float pointer channel data. Is there anything else? I think that's everything. So now if I just copy this and then I'm going to paste it here. Just take these out and we should be golden. And we'll just need to put this in our header as well. So there we go. So now we see that that has really cleaned up our process block. Okay, it's still complaining though because it's saying, hey, we don't have a declaration of this in the header. So I'll just put this in our private section, void fill buffer. And now if we build, we should be okay. And there we go. So we got build succeeded. Of course, we don't have anything consoling out now because we've got rid of that. But see how that cleans up the process block really nicely. So that is it. That is it for this first one. So this is how we create a very basic circular buffer. And I hope you found that helpful. If you found that helpful, be sure to give a like to the uh, video and subscribe if you're not already subscribed. And then in the subsequent tutorials, I'm going to show you how to create a simple delay uh, out of these calculations. So I hope you found that helpful and I will see you next time.